sometimes. Is there anybody here whose back has never hurt? Uh, we're going to have two talks tonight. We're really honored to have Dr. Jason Hu, who's the Chief of Rehabilitation at New York Presbyterian Queens, and Dr. Libby Gallimer, who is the Associate Chief. They are physiatrists. Is there anybody here who does not know what a physiatrist is? Raise your hand. Okay, that's good. Amazing. Physiatrists are physicians who do physical medicine. They are, you know, if you have a physical therapist, a physiatrist, very likely is going to tell that physical therapist what to do and train her or him. Uh, physiatrists do their best to avoid giving you medications, and they will tell you how to stay in shape forever. At least, or at least until you're 120. Dr. Hoos, title is you can see it, arthritic pain, low back. He will answer your question. You want to answer questions separately, or it will be able to go. Um, either is fine. Yeah, if you have any questions, either raise your hands or write them down and I'll uh, yeah, uh, give them to me and I'll, I'll present them. Dr. Who? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bright, for um, inviting us to come and also uh, for this opportunity. I want to thank everyone for trekking out in the rain and the wind. Um, so, thank you. Um, I am a physiatrist, and uh, just to add to what Dr. Bright said, um, the main goal of physiatry is to return patients to function. And the specialty was really born after World War II when all the, you, you have the clicker, right? soldiers were okay, coming right. back from, um, so just, from the war. And they needed someone to take care of their overall care. So they were kind of fixed on the battlefield. They had their surgeries. They were uh, treated to medically stable. And then when they came back, they needed a physician to take care of the whole person. And that's where physiatry came in. The main goal of physiatry is to return someone to function. Whether it's a musculoskeletal problem, like a, a sports injury, or arthritis, or a neurological condition, like um, Parkinson's, stroke, uh, spinal cord injury. So there's two schools, uh, or, or two branches of physiatry. One is neurological, and the other is more musculoskeletal. So we are in the or, uh, Department of Orthopedics and Rehabilitation at New York Presbyterian Queens, and um, we are more in that musculoskeletal branch of physiatry, okay? Um, a little background about myself. I am um, from Queens. I grew up three neighborhoods from here in Elmhurst, and um, I did my training <coughs> at um, New York Presbyterian in, uh, at Columbia and Cornell, it's a merge program. And I did a <coughs> fellowship training in sports and spine medicine at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. And then when I was coming back to New York uh, from Chicago, I wanted to come back to my community and give back to my community and that's why I'm here. Um, and at the time, our hospital was New York Hospital Queens, so now we are under uh, the parent New York Presbyterian system. So I'm going to talk about arthritic low back pain um, and uh, what are some of the causes, what to look for, what to ask of your uh, provider, your physician, um, or your primary care doctor when you should go see a specialist. So I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to go over some background about back pain. About 10 million Americans have um, acute onset of low back pain each year. Um, it's the second most common 
uh, cause for loss of uh, work time. It's the second most common reason to visit a primary care physician. And um, it's the most common disability of uh, people under the age of 45. There's a cost of about $70 billion per year, direct and indirect. So the direct would be the medical cost of treating the back pain. The indirect would be the lost time at work. And uh, about 5% of back pain turn into chronic cases. Um, that 5% accounts for 80% of the cost of back pain. So what you want to do is catch the acute back pain, treat it so it doesn't turn into chronic back pain. And, uh, um, and the definition of chronic pain is uh, uh, when you have pain for more than six months. So there's an umbrella term uh, that we use for low back pain, and that's lumbago. And uh, I'm going to talk about um, when we don't want to uh, use the term lumbago later on in the talk. So now I'm going to go over some anatomy, basic anatomy, um, as to what can cause pain. So on the left over here, we have a model of the spine. And uh, the spine is separated into actually five different parts. You have the cervical spine up here, which we commonly call the neck. You have the um, thoracic spine over here, uh, which is the mid-back. Uh, the thoracic spine is where your ribs come out of. And then the uh, lumbar spine is down here. That's the low back. And the sacrum is down over here. That's this um, triangular looking bone over here, and then your coccyx, your tailbone, is all the way down here. So certainly uh, the bones um, uh, can cause pain if you have a fracture in the bone. Um, so the biggest part of the bone is the vertebral body over there, and if someone has something like osteoporosis, you can have a fracture over there. Even with very minor trauma, you can get a fracture. So and that can be very painful. Um, you have some joints. A joint is a space between bones. So unfortunately, this picture, you can't see it very well. But that's the space, and you can see it, between those two bones. And the facet joint is a common uh, pain generator in your um, spine, especially the low back over there. Um, and it's an articulation, meaning kind of an, uh, a connection between the um, uh, upper segment and, and the lower segment. So that's one of the connections in your, in your uh, spine over there. Over here we have ligaments. And ligaments are what holds bones together. We have very thick ligaments in our spine. And uh, they prevent the slippage of one bone over the other. Uh, they prevent sideway movements. And uh, if there's little wear and tear in that ligament over there, that can cause some pain and discomfort as well. But the most important function of ligaments is to create stability. Um, over here, I have a picture of some of the muscles along your back. Um, and um, one of the more common reasons for pain, especially in younger people, is if you strain a muscle. A strain is an overstretch of a muscle. Sometimes it can be done with uh, a twisting moment, uh, movement or with some lifting of some heavy things. Um, and that can be quite uncomfortable. Um, and then over here on the right, we have nerves. So along our spine, we have something called the spinal cord, which is a big nerve that comes down from your brainstem, down your spinal column. And at each level, 
the, the spinal nerves exit and they um, kind of spread out. So in the neck, they come out and go down into the arms and the hands. Um, in the mid back, they come out and come across your torso. And in the low back, they come out and they go uh, distribute down your leg. And uh, last but not least, we have discs. Um, so these, uh, the discs are uh, almost like a cartilage in between two bones. It gives it a cushion. And it's kind of like a jelly donut. There's an inner jelly, which we call nucleus pulposus. And then there's an outer donut casing over here, uh, which you call annulus fibrosus. And actually, the outer third of the disc has some small nerve endings in it. So if you have a small tear, those nerves can be irritated, and that can cause some uh, local back pain. So I think when I was re reviewing the anatomy, we went through some of the etiology, which is a fancy word for causes um, of low back pain. And uh, so I talked about degenerative changes. Degenerative changes are wear and tear. So that has to do with the aging process. Um, some things that can make wear and tear um, get worse or uh, expedite wear and tear is um, when you have extra pressure, like uh, being overweight. That can cause the wear and tear to go quicker and people can have symptoms at a younger, earlier age. Um, so you can have degenerative de changes along the discs. Um, you can have degenerative changes along the joints also. Um, some of the things that I talked about, I think, uh, when I was reviewing the anatomy, I went through a good number of these conditions already. So the muscle strain, that's from uh, muscle pain. Ligament sprain, when you overstretch a ligament, it's called a sprain. Um, the facet joints, those small joints along the side of your back, they can become arthritic and uh, that can be painful. Um, spinal stenosis is when that space in the spinal canal gets narrowed, either because of the, most commonly because of the disc pushing back, or some of the other structures, uh, like the ligaments, also pushing into that space, and that can be very painful. Um, certainly fractures I touched upon, if you have uh, osteoporosis, you have, an, uh, your bones are more brittle, and you can have a fracture even with very minor trauma, as I was saying before. Um, sciatica is when those nerves, as they're exiting the spine, are being pinched on, and that pinching can cause pain going all the way down the leg because that's how the leg sensation from the leg communicates with your central nervous system which is your spinal cord and your brain um and then you can have most commonly it's the discs uh sometimes the ligaments when they're bulging out towards that um the exit of the nerve that can cause it if those facet joints are arthritic that joint can become bigger, and that's also right next to where the nerve exits, so that can pinch it. Yes. Supposed to be a muscle, which is somehow moved, which is pressing on the nerve. Um, that's what a stretching helps, but it stretches out muscle that's away from the nerve, also. Well, the muscles are a little bit further away from the spinal nerves. So if it's a muscle strain or um, muscle tightness, that's more, um, we, we would call it superficial, and it stays local, it doesn't shoot all the way down the leg. It happened to me. Okay. Because it could be two things that happened at the same time. So, and we can talk about that um, uh, a little bit later. Uh, the perform piriformis syndrome. So, we have muscle along our buttock over here called the piriformis muscle. And it's uh, the sciatic nerve can travel between uh, the muscle bellies of this piriformis muscle. 
And in some people, when that muscle gets really tight, it really pinches or squeezes that sciatic nerve as it's coursing through the piriformis muscle. So that's what piriformis syndrome is. Um, the sacroiliac joint is a joint on the side of your low back. I, in the anatomy I showed you before where the sacrum was, that triangular bone. And that bone is connected to your pelvic bone over here. And that, can, that joint where it connects is the sacroiliac joint. That can be a, uh, a source of pain. Um, scoliosis is an abnormal curvature in the spine. Scoliosis itself may not cause pain, but uh, because of the biomechanical changes and the positioning in time, it can um, uh, create some uh, changes in the soft tissue that can cause pain. Um, kyphosis is a curvature of um, a rounded back or um, you can consider it uh, hunched back, and that um, in itself can cause a lot of stiffness in the area, limit your range of motion. Coccidinia is tailbone pain. So the coccyx, um, if you have a fall, it can be angulated, it can cause pain locally. Some people have fractures of the coccyx if they have a fall. Um, Trauma itself uh, can, can cause pain, um, especially if it results in a fracture or a tear of some soft tissue. Um, hip arthritis or hip pain can also manifest as back pain. So when you have pain in one joint, we always look at two other joints, the joint above, the joint below, and the joint on the opposite side. So let's say you have um, hip pain um, on the right. The joint above would be your low back, the sacroiliac area, your low back. And the joint below would be the right knee. The joint on the opposite side would be your left hip. So those other joints are very vulnerable to um, uh, being affected as well. And you can have pain from overcompensation um, and pressure on those joints. Uh, metastatic cancer, that's something that we would want to consider because certain cancers can spread to the spine and uh, if, you ha if there is a history of cancer, the physician taking care of this back pain should be very mindful of it and certain tests or extra tests should be done. And then uh, infection, an infection in the disc, um, an infection in the tissue um, uh, surrounding the spinal canal can also cause a lot of uh, pain. So, I'm going to talk a little bit more about degenerative changes because that's the most common cause of uh, low back pain, the wear and tear. So, as we age, we can get uh, gray hairs and wrinkles. Gray hairs on our, in our hair wrinkles on our skin and our face. Um, in our joints, we can get um, arthritis. Uh, knee arthritis is a very common form of arthritis, osteoarthritis. And in the spine, we can get those degenerative changes that I was talking about. Wear and tear on the discs, wear and tear on the, um, on the joints over there. Um, this is, this is a picture of my grandmother. She is um, 105, going on 106 wow. in two months. Um, and she's, uh, she has a good amount of arthritis, but she still moves a lot. So one interesting tidbit about my grandmother is she was never an athlete. She you know, never participated in sports or anything. But um, I realized just a couple of years ago that she actually does do a lot of exercising. So she's a very, um, I wouldn't say, she's a very ritualistic Buddhist. So she does a lot of praying and so she um, kind of kneels and gets up, kneels and gets up in front of like the Buddha statue. Um, at two sets of 50, 
So she goes up and down, up and down, 50 times, like twice a day. So that's basically her exercising, that movement. And she does it still to this day at 105. So that's her exercise. Um, diagnosis. So you can certainly get x-rays. Um, that can tell us whether or not there's some movement in the spine. It can tell us very quickly if there's a fracture. Um, certainly MRIs can be helpful and can give us some information about the soft tissue um, that the x-ray doesn't. So x-rays give us information about bone well, but not really the soft tissue like the discs, the ligaments, the nerves. Um, you can get a CT scan to check for specific fractures that may not be seen on x-ray. Uh, sometimes we get uh, a nerve test, a nerve study called an EMG, to check for um, people who have that sciatica, we call it radiculopathy, um, and especially if they have weakness in the leg uh, that's manifested from this radiculopathy, that gives us additional information about how uh, deeply or severely affected the nerves and the muscles are. Um, you can get a bone scan, it get, gives us some information about uh, specific um, bone areas that may not be seen on x-ray, like if there's a small fracture somewhere, um, we can pick it up on a bone scan. And you can also get blood work to see if there's any infection, um, but you can get that million dollar workup, none of that replaces a good physical exam. So a good physical exam is very, very important um, in addition to what the history, which is what the patients tell us. Because um, the physical exam will help the physician, especially a fit, uh, specialist, pinpoint where the problem is. Because in my previous slides, I just showed you all those possibilities um, of anatomical structures that can cause pain. So that's why the physical exam is so important. So, lum like I told you in the beginning of the lecture, the word lumbago is an umbrella term for low back pain. And when you, when you go see your primary care doctor who helps you kind of uh, manage the initial back pain, um, they, they may be telling you that you have low back pain, lumbago, but it might be a little bit harder to figure out exactly what is the cause of the low back pain. And that's where going to a specialist is very helpful because we, especially through our physical exam skills, can help tease out the cause of the low back pain. And, um, and certainly we can help direct which diagnostic study is most helpful um, and uh, we don't have to use a million dollar workup which these days healthcare may or may not even pay for right? um, treatment options so first and foremost the most important thing um, usually is getting some good quality physical therapy. Because I can give you all the injections and medications in the world, and in fact, if I give you an injection, you know, I make the hospital more money and they'll be more happy. But, um, if I, those things are not going to change the architecture of your disc, it's not really going to change your muscles, especially if you have tight muscles or something or uh, if you have a muscle strain, it's not going to change those anatomical <coughs> structures. Um, physical therapy actually can do that. A lot of people ask me why. They say they've gone to physical therapy and it's not really helpful. Why should they, why should they listen to me and go to physical therapy? Well, I usually ask about what type of physical therapy they had or what their experience was in physical therapy before. Because um, there is a school of physical therapy where it's based on modalities, which is the hot packs, the cold packs, the ultrasound, and uh, massage. And it can be helpful for some people, um, 
But if you've tried that already and it's not helpful, then it's, there's another school of physical therapy that's exercise-based therapy that may be help, more helpful for your musculoskeletal condition. So, um, so that's why it's important to do, uh, consider trying physical therapy, work on a home exercise program, and continue the work at home on your own. Um, bracing. Um, another option, especially if the pain is really, really bad, having a brace can get you through those painful times and um, uh, can help control the pain temporarily. However, usually it's not a um, permanent solution because sometimes it can actually weaken your muscles if you depend solely on the brace. And um, what you want to do, a lot of people ask me about wearing corsets as a brace. Um, you want to use your own muscles as your corset instead of relying on something external like a brace. Medication. So there's a lot of different medication options. You have anti-inflammatories, over-the-counter ones are Motrin, Advil, Olive. Um, you have analgesics like Tylenol. And then you have some opioids which are a bit stronger, but there's a lot more side effects to it. Um, there's some neuropathic pain medications like Neurontin. Uh, another word, uh, name for that is Lyric, uh, uh, Gabapentin. And then also Lyrica is another one. Muscle relaxants, if the muscles are really tight and stiff, that's uh, a good option. Um, but it's important to talk to your physician about these medications because they have different side effects and different populations may, um, uh, one may work better for others. If you have kidney problems, you might want to have one rather than the others. If you have liver problems, you might want to have another medication. So it's important to discuss with your physician about that. Uh, injections is an option um, to uh, alleviate the pain in a relatively short period of time. Um, there, not everyone does injections, so it's important to go to, um, if, if it's low back pain, to go to a spine specialist um, for an injection. So I'm an, interventional, an interventionalist, so I do the procedures under um, uh, image guidance, like fluoroscopy, which is x-ray. Um, a lot of people ask me about acupuncture, maybe because I'm Asian, um, but I actually am a good person to ask about this because my mom's an acupuncturist, and also I, when I was a medical student, I did an acupuncture elective in China, and so um, I don't, I'm not opposed to acupuncture, however, um, to me, it's a little bit like taking medications. When you're taking it, it may be very helpful, but when you stop, the pain may come back. The good thing about acupuncture is that there's not a lot of side effects like medication. Unfortunately, most of the time, you do have to pay out of pocket for it. Um, so you have to kind of weigh the, fi um, the finances with how much benefit you're getting from it. Um, and uh, lastly, I have down here chiropractic manipulations. Um, again, I'm not opposed to chiropractic treatment. I think it can be very helpful, but the most important thing is to go to a reputable um, chiropractor um, because uh, chiropractic treatment is not very standardized. So you want to just make sure that you go to someone who is reputable. So, and this is some information, and we can put the slide up at the end also, about the different offices that we have, um, where at the main, besides the main hospital, we're also at Fresh Meadows, which is probably the one closest to here, I think. Uh, we have a beautiful, brand new facility in Jackson Heights, and then I also see patients down in downtown Flushing um, at Queens Crossing. Uh, but... If you have any questions or doubts about where to go, this number will direct you to the correct place, okay? So I think I might have ran a bit over time, so I'm gonna let uh, Dr. Galmer um, give her talk, and I'm gonna stay till the end if you have